Welcome to Dilworth Lutheran. Yet again, I am so glad you're taking time to share and listen to the message that we are sharing with you. And I'm in the sanctuary and it is just so calming to be here. And I know in our hearts, soon, we will be all together again here, being able to worship together in this beautiful sanctuary. And I would just like to share just a quick prayer today being it's the beginning of advent season is starting preparing our hearts and souls for the birth of christ stir up your power lord jesus christ and come be your merciful protection save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And got the organ on, haven't touched it since March. They might have might have some dust bunnies getting blown out of it, but gonna play a tune on this for you. to listen to Pastor Elizabeth share the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Welcome here to the sanctuary of Dilworth Lutheran Church. You are so welcome as we hear God's word for us tonight, uh, as we enjoy some of the beauty of our sanctuary in this Advent season, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive Jesus at Christmas. Uh, our scripture for this evening is from Daniel 6. So the presidents and satraps conspired and came to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps and the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an interdict that whoever prays to anyone, divine or human, for 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and the interdict. Although Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued to go to his house, which had windows in its upper room, open toward Jerusalem, and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to God and praise him, just as he had done previously. The conspirators came and found Daniel praying and seeking mercy before his God. Then they approached the king and said concerning the interdict, O king, did you not sign an interdict that anyone who prays to anyone, divine or human, within 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions? The king answered, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they responded to the king, Daniel, one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or to the interdict you have signed. But he is saying his prayers three times a day. 
When the king heard the charge, he was very much distressed. He was determined to save Daniel, and until the sun went down, he made every effort to rescue him. Then the conspirators came to the king and said to him, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians, that no interdict or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king gave the command, and Daniel was brought and thrown into the den of lions. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you faithfully serve, deliver you. A stone was brought and laid at the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords, so that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No food was brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then, at the break of day, the king got up and hurried to the den of lions. When he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out anxiously to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you faithfully serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel then said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths so that they would not hurt me, because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king. I have done no wrong. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, Pastor Arlen Hermanson, one of the pastors here in our congregation, shared a difficult word with us from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah reminded us of the hard truth that sometimes we neglect God's word. Pastor Arlen's words have bounced around in my head all week long. Yesterday morning, I was tired, and so I stayed in bed, missing the 10 minutes that would otherwise have been my chance to read a psalm quietly by myself. This is my thing. It matters to me to read or hear a handful of verses each day, verses that I'm not using to prepare for a sermon or for teaching, but verses that simply challenge me and encourage me and help me to remember God's people and God's plans for us all. And when I neglect God's word, when I go too many days without cruising through a psalm, this is to my peril because as christians my anchor your anchor who we are is best shaped by god's word we are at our best when god's word shapes our days by having nudges and encouragement of regularly hearing who god is for us in scripture and when we don't have scripture and worship regularly in our lives we tend to float around a bit. We get consumed in our own business without direction, without the guidance of God and God's word that we need. Now, one of the funny things about God's word, and it's not funny in a ha-ha sense, one of the funny things is that when our lives really get to be rocky, that's when we most often try avoiding God's word. It's often when we most avoid the fellowship of Christians, our churches. We stay in bed just 10 minutes longer or schedule other things during worship, or we scroll through Instagram instead of reading a devotion before we go to sleep. And honestly, there's very little cultural encouragement to worship and hear God's word. Now think of your own life. Think of the lives of yourself or the people that you love most. When we're struggling, 
may be when a marriage is rocky or it feels like it's about to fall apart, when you're exhausted from another battle with your teen, that's often when it's easiest to disengage from each other, from our church, from hearing God's word. It's easiest to hide from hearing God. And there, on the other side of the coin, there are those times where you feel like you're doing your thing, you're headed in the right direction, you're working hard, and then life throws you that curveball. When you're doing your thing, you're trying to work and even be the parent you want to be, and something outside of you makes it feel like the wheels have fallen off your bus. Now for Daniel, this is the situation that happens in our scripture. As the prophet Jeremiah foretold, the people of Israel were taken captive by the Medes and the Persians. Daniel and his whole family were living in a foreign land. And Daniel tried doing his best, blooming where he was planted. He got a job. He was working in the royal, the imperial court. Um, he was a good administrator. You read in the rest of the book of Daniel how he was just good. He worked hard. He was being faithful to his God, our God. He continued to pray three times a day. And then, and then others saw Daniel. They saw him at work and they were jealous. The satraps and the presidents, they had the king pass a law so that no one could worship anyone but the king for 30 days. Still, Daniel continued to do his work. He continued to worship our God. And as a result, Daniel gets thrown into a pit of lions. Now notice in this whole piece, as Daniel is being thrown to what we can rightly assume would be his death, Daniel says nothing. He has no apologies for his faithfulness to God. He has no apologies for the good and hard work he has done in his new home. He accepts that his faith at times will absolutely set him apart. Faith in God does make us different. It should, it does. And Daniel's faith, his trust that faithfulness to God isn't always sunshine and roses, that our faith can lead to real sacrifice in our lives, that our faith can lead to real, at times, heart-wrenching challenge. This goes unsaid by Daniel. Daniel's silent outlook is so much like the Apostle Paul's in the New Testament. When Paul faces imprisonment, possibly even death, Paul shares, If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. When Daniel gets thrown out into the den of lions, it's actually words by King Darius, someone who doesn't know the living God. It's words of King Darius, which best illuminate what's truly happening in the story. The morning after Daniel's been thrown into the den of lions, King Darius hurries to the lion den and he asks, Is your God able to deliver you from the lions? Is your God able? People of God, our God is able. Our God does deliver us. Just like God delivered Daniel, we are here together even by screen. We are here with our bodies and our spirits and our minds. Sometimes, yes, they bear the mark of the challenges. They have scars from our pasts. The times where we've been thrown into a den of lions simply because that's life. Sometimes they bear the marks of our own neglect, of our bodies, of our God. And we're here, we are alive. In the words of the prophet Elton John, we're still standing after all this time. Because simply our God delivers us. God sustains us, God provides. Against all the sin and the death 
And the forces of the devil that are in our world, even when sometimes we neglect God's word, when we feel unanchored or disconnected from God, God still chooses to be active, to be working to save you and me today. Think of the last time when you experienced real peace that felt like it surpassed all understanding. Peace when you most needed it. Or think of the 62 homes tonight in Dilworth and Glendon and Felton. 62 homes who are currently unwrapping their Thanksgiving baskets. Our church, a few other churches, and UC Hope, one of our sister organizations in Glendon, work together to identify and to make sure that people who needed a leg up this Thanksgiving received it. So in addition to a turkey, they received literally words of hope from us. Words of hope that God is with them and that God cares for them. Sometimes we unwrap God's saving presence. People of God, is your God able to deliver you? Yes. Our God saves us. Tonight, we gather to thank God, to thank God for our lives, for food and for shelter and for clothing for each other. We gather to thank God that God has brought us this far, that in the person of Jesus Christ, our God who lived and took on our life and our lot, that through him, we might have new life. God's going to continue with us. Our God delivers. People of God, our God is absolutely able. And it's to him we give thanks and we give praise. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Elizabeth, for that fulfilling message on Daniel in the lion's den. Let us all learn from her words of wonderful wisdom. And now I'd like to close with the words from Hark the Glad Sound. Him, Hark the glad sound, the Savior comes, the Savior promised long. Let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song. So let us all prepare our hearts and minds and souls in this upcoming four weeks leading up to the birth of Jesus. In our names, Lord, we pray for peace, fulfillment, and harmony for everybody and everyone around us in our world. Have a wonderful day.